Hey everybody, how you doing? This is First Lady Prophetess Valerie Hawkins. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't know if you see me on YouTube or Facebook. Um, if it's on Facebook, you can share. If it's on YouTube, you can subscribe or share with your friends and just talk about it. But anyway, I'm also a spiritual life coach and I've always wanted to be able to associate the Bible with myself. I always wanted to be able to find out how do I apply it to my daily life so I can have a good understanding. One of the first things I learned was in all ye get, get a good understanding of the word of God. And so I try to break it, break it down so you can be able to associate this with your own life and be able to obtain, keep the word of God so you can understand it and apply it to your everyday life. That helps bring structure, that helps bring you closer to a walk with the Lord. I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm baptized, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, when I came to the Lord, I came in with jeans and a t-shirt, you know, straight off the street, straight from the ghetto, as they would say. But God has came in and did the work. And I can say, thank God, and look where he brought me from. I hope that you get something out of the word today. I try to share a word once or twice a week. And it's very important that um, that you apply this to your everyday life and get a good understanding. If you have any questions, you can put it down below or inbox me or whatever they do on here. I'm learning how to do this thing, but I want to say this, may God bless you, may God keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I look forward, hopefully you visit my page again or subscribe to me again. And anyway, enjoy the video. May God bless you. He done so much for me. Oh, I cannot tell it all. Oh, I cannot tell it all. Oh, I cannot tell it all. Done so much for me, oh, I cannot tell it all. He has taken all my sins away. Hey, praise the Lord, saints. How you doing? How you doing, everybody on Facebook? How you doing, everybody on YouTube? How are you doing? If it's on YouTube, if it's on Facebook, push like, push share. It's good to be with you this evening. Uh, you know, I'm doing a thing on deliverance, but however, tonight, I'm talking about Josiah, King Josiah, who became a king at eight years old. Yes, who was the king of Jerusalem at such a young age. This man has such a history, you know, um, or a young boy into a man has such a history. You know, you begin to read. You can also find it in the book of Chronicles, I believe. Um, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 35 through 20, 20 through 27 or something like that. But I, if, I would, if I was you, I would take the time and read it myself because it's a good read. It's a good understanding. It's kind of sad in a way. It's good because of the things that he does for the Lord. He comes in there and he wants to set the crooked road straight uh, in his kingdom. You know, um, he first he finds out how he went sent them to build the house of the Lord, to get the house of the Lord together. And how Kelia, I believe that's how you say the name, how Kelia, how Kelia, he goes and he finds the the how the book of the lord or the word of the lord that was lost in the house and he turns it over to the scribe um and the scribe takes it and reads it before king josiah and then king josiah in turn says hey listen you got to go before god you got to go before god and find out what this is all about we can we cannot fall in the hands of an angry god and he goes before god and he begins to to read um i mean he begins to pray and seek the Lord. Not only does he go, but there was other men and women of God that went with him. And they begin to seek the Lord and get answers from God as to what they can do. Because at eight years old, he knew he didn't agree with that. Okay, somebody? <laughs> he said, a little child will lead him. Okay, he didn't agree with that. But there was so much sin in the land. He said, listen, we have got to get this thing right. And in the process of it all, what happens? He goes in and God says, listen, I'm not happy with y'all. I'm not happy with you at all. You know, you you guys are doing too much. You're worshiping all these idols. You have these other foreign gods. You're sitting up there. You're doing all this pagan worship. You have all these groven images. You're sitting up there. You, you, you the, the priests are, oh, it, it's a mess. It, it was just a mess. People all up in, in, in the uh, tabernacle, the dwelling place, they, they worshiping other gods. And, and God said, listen, I'm not having it. It's a problem. I got a problem and I got a situation with this going on here, okay? And he brings in Josiah, and excuse me for a moment because I don't want to forget anything. Um, 
and he's talking to Josiah about this. I mean, he's talking to them about this, and he go back and they give him the word of the Lord. The Lord comes in and says, listen, I'm just going to deal with you. I'm just to handle this. But more so than that, he God said, listen, the one that sent you here, the king that sent you to me, he said, his heart is so soft. He has a kind heart. He says, I want you to let him know that I said, because of him, and because he sent you to me to inquire of the Lord, I'm not going to allow him. I'm going to destroy you. I'm a, y'all going to get in trouble now. I'm going to spank you a little bit. But as long as he's living, he's not going to be in the midst of any of this. I'm not going to allow these dangerous things or this land to be destroyed or you guys to get in trouble as long as this king lives. And uh, he, they go back. They deliver the word. They're working on the house of the Lord. King Josiah decides that he decides that he said, listen, call all, everybody. I want everybody. Everybody. I want everybody in the kingdom, the cities, the town, and the states. I want you to listen to what I got to say about what's going on here. We just to change up some things. It's not going to be like it was. We're going we to get rid of all this foolishness, all this witchcraft, all these wizards, all this worshiping other gods, believing other gods, uh, burning incense in, in their house uh, uh, unto other gods and calling on their name. When there's only one and true living God has done all this. If it wasn't for the one and true living God, let me just side note this real quick. People have a tendency to forget what you have is because God created it. And I told you that before in the book of John in the first chapter, you can read that for yourself. Nothing had been made that was out him that was made in the beginning. There was nothing here. This place was void. It was empty. It was deep. It was, it was, it, had, it had been destroyed. I mean, there's some demonic spirits here, you know, that's in the face of the deep of the earth. Yeah, there's some of that here. <laughs> but other than that, there was nothing here that you could live off of, survive of, on, or anything like that. And God came in and he spoke these things into existence and he allowed us to have life. He, the spirit of the Lord went into the earth, the vast, the deep, the void of the earth. And listen, we get, he began to, God began to speak. We begin to get trees. We begin to get all working ma- uh, animals, um, all kind four footed beasts, so we can eat birds of the air. I mean, God, he got his stuff. This one, them six days, he was handling his business, so we could have a place to live, so we could have life and have it more abundantly. And um, and we lost our minds. I mean, we have lost our minds. It's over. 360,000 different religions. Somebody said to me the other day, well, why, why does it have to be so many? Because everybody got an idea. <laughs> everybody got an idea how they want to do things. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not here to say that there wasn't other gods. I mean, hey, it, it, it is what it is. They had tree gods, the turtle dogs, the god, dog, uh, god dogs, uh, um, whatever. Whatever you can think of, they had rock doll uh, idol images. They had, they take the trees and make the tree bare, carve into the tree and make it a god. They was doing all kind of crazy stuff. They was taking their kids and burning their kids on the mullet. I mean, a woman would get pregnant on purpose, on purpose, and burn her children or her child, her baby, and worship that baby to a, 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 a god. Now, who wants to serve a god like that? I don't, I don't know about all that. That's way too much. There were so many different gods running around here. God, 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 God. But God came in, okay? And God said, listen, I'm a jealous God. I have no other God before me. Y'all tripping. I created all things. He never said it wasn't other gods. He just said he wasn't going to have them before. That's another misconception. He never said that it wasn't other gods that people served. He just said, the true living God said, the one that created all things, okay? He said, that he was not going to have another God before him. And he not playing with it. And you know what? I don't blame him. That's like having another woman over your house. That's like having another man over your woman. <laughs> I don't blame him. It ain't, it ain't happening. It ain't going down like that. Okay? So this is what's going on. So anyway, back to what I'm talking about. King Josiah. He he goes in. He says, listen. We just get this stuff straight. Hey, and he went through the city. He went. He burning down stuff. He was. Listen, the priests that were serving other gods, the people that were serving other gods, hey, the sword they met, they fell, the bones, he he, he tore their houses up, he tore their groven images up, he tore their idols up, 
he, he them witches and warlocks, all that stuff would happen with him, the more them demonic spirits. He cleansed the land. He cleansed the land. And I think that it's called uh reformation. He came in and he said, Let me let me go in and reform some things. <laughs> I mean, if a child knows something is wrong, come on, somebody. Come on. I'm just thinking about that thing. If a child say, hey, don't do that. Something ain't right. Let's go, mama. Let's go, daddy. I think you need to listen to that child, okay? But anyway, so now we're back and he's he's done great things. I mean, he did so many marvelous works that he do for God. I just, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's sad how his life ended because, I, you know, I feel like it didn't have to go like that. You feel me? It didn't have to end like that. But if you go into the book of Chronicles, and I believe uh, it's uh, 2 Chronicles 35, let me look real quick, 35, 20 through, I'm sorry, y'all, 20 through 24, 20 through 27, man, it, it, it was a sad day in the neighborhood, you know, um, I, I just want to say this, that when, you know, we love God and, and a lot of times we can do things and we say God told us to do it and God didn't tell us to do it. We just be putting two on a 10. But, and, but listen, God does not just talk to us because we have churches or we have mantles or we're pastors or elders or uh, apostles or God just doesn't talk to us, but he also talks to his layman. Come on, somebody. If he, if he made a cock crow, come on. If he made a donkey, a horse give way, uh, come on. He 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 knows what to do and how to do things. We have to be we have to be mindful of the word of God. And if we take if somebody comes to us and we don't know how to receive that thing, we as people and we as individuals need to go before God, fast and praise. Listen, King Josiah gave us an example. He said, "Go before the Lord for me." If you don't know how to go. Go to the elders of the church. Go to the mothers of the church. Go to the deacons. Go to your pastor. Go to your first lady. Say, listen, somebody is telling me something. And I don't know for sure if this is coming from God or is this coming from me or is it just coming from them. And let me just flip this for a minute. If you feel like God is telling you to share something with somebody, you go on a fast and you fast and pray because you don't want to alter somebody's life and you're just in your flesh. Come on, somebody. And you go and you go on a fast and you, you go before the Lord and say, Lord, are you really telling me this? Do you really want me to share this with this person? You know, you go again, go to the elders of the church. You know, I, I did a video before about that fasting and that praying. It's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You go on a three-day fast unless God tells you to go further. You know, check, get you a book if you never fast before. Find out what it is to fast. Find out the things that you're supposed to do because these things are important because only we're taught in the things of God. Some things only come out through fasting and prayer because you want to be sure. You don't want to add to or take away from the to, to, from the word of God. And when you speak over a person's life and they accept your word and they follow your word, you want to make sure that you're standing on the word, which is the word of God. Amen. 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 So back to what I'm talking about, this Josiah. He was he was a bad boy. That's all I got to say. And I think he reigned, I believe, 31 years. Um, and it's and he was the king of Jerusalem. But I, it was sad the way his life ended. Not what he did in the process thereof of what it ended. Because when he once he got everything together, once he got everything lined up, once he felt like he had did what God wanted him to do to cleanse that land after those after the, the forefathers had messed it up so bad, he was doing what he felt he needed to do. He died. And the way that he died and how he died, well, all of us are going to see death one day, but not the way that he died. I mean, it was, it was, it was it's, it's cold. You know what I'm saying? I was like, wow. And it it's because he did not listen. Listen, there was a fight between, uh, um, I believe it was Nico. Uh, he was a king of Egypt, I believe he was. And he was coming up against the Assyrians, I believe. And um, King Josiah, for some reason, got in the middle of it. You ever been in the middle? You ever been in the middle <laughs> of people in a situation and they business and they mess? Come on, somebody, and you know you should. God didn't tell you to do that. God, God, God didn't tell you to do that. 
God didn't tell you to be in the middle of somebody's business. He didn't tell you to be in the middle of somebody's mess. So what happened in the process, he got in the middle because we have to take the word of God and apply it to ourselves. And King Josiah got in the middle and the king from Egypt said, listen, I don't want to, I don't have a problem with you, Josiah. I ain't got no problem with you. I'm over here fighting the war that God told me to. He told me to go and destroy these people. Now you fight me. I don't have nothing to do with you. And listen, because God is with me, sir, I don't want to destroy you. Let me just say this. For those of us that God has moved, God has showed up mildly, God has came in and the standard was raised up, up, up against the enemy. And we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. God got our back. God got our back. Don't you know that God had that man's back? God had his back. And he told me, he said, God is telling me to do this. I wish on hindsight that he had a win and said, listen, let me go and talk to my folks again and have him go before the Lord and see if, God, if he want me to fight this man. But he didn't. What did he do? Instead of him just giving way, because he said, hey, don't come meddling in my business. I don't know if pride got in the way. I don't know if he was having a bad day. I don't know if he got on the wrong side of bed. I don't know what happened. But what I do know is this, that God was with King Nico. He was with that man because he wanted him to destroy this nation. And he went in and um, he met and the archers, they started fighting. And King Josiah says, oh, I'm going to go to war anyway. I'm fighting anyway. He disguised himself, first and foremost, so no one could recognize who he was. I mean, first of all, I mean, first mistake was making up your mind to go. Second mistake was trying to d disguise yourself so couldn't nobody recognize you because you might have had one chance like that. But the third, but the third thing was he went to the battlefield and the the arches was shooting arches to kill the other people and he caught one. Man, 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 man! All those great things, all those great works. Did I just say that? I believe I said that. <laughs> Your works are not going to get you into heaven. Come on, somebody. But he did all these great, great, great things from God. For God, and, and, and to die this way is, he goes to his man in the chariot. They moved him over. He says, listen, just take me in. Take, I'm wounded. I, uh, take me, take me back. Take me back to my bed. <laughs> take me back. Oh, I'm hurt, too. But anyway, he died from his wounds, and um, I felt bad about that. I'm like, and the king, Nico, what well, he went on to destroy him and destroy the other people too. Come on, somebody. You know, I talked about this before. I looked at the other video that I did before. But the, prop, the thing about it is that not listening, that not listening, we have got to listen and be attentive to what God is saying, what we say, saying to the church. And the church is where your tabernacle, your dwelling place is in you. And you've got to, sometimes you got to take down. You can take a couple of days and pray about that thing. You could if somebody tells you, tell you something, or they've been lying, been lying. I talked to somebody the other day, and it was a lady, and I believe that she was on drugs or whatever, and she was a drug addict, and so on and so forth. And she kept saying, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that this is not going to happen, that this is not going to happen, she said, because I know this is not going to happen. And um, what happened? She just happened to be right. She just happened to be right in this situation. And God will use whom he will. Who are we to tell God who to use? But God tried to even use him. He said, listen, stop meddling in my business. I don't know who this is for. I don't know who, who I'm talking to. But I'm here to tell you tonight, if you are in the midst of something, that doesn't have anything to do with you. Just because you say God is with you don't mean that God is with you. Come on, somebody. God was with that king, and he loved Josiah. Josiah had done great things for him. But he did not listen, and he did not obey, and he decided to do, take things and do things his own way in his own hands, and it cost him his life. It, it, it can not only cost him his life, I'm sure that other people died as well. I'm sure that he had other people in his army that died as well and from his kingdom. But we as a people and as individuals, 
You the word of God tells us to be wise and well doing. We need to listen to the word of God. We need to add heed. We need to sit back and say, okay, God, what are you saying to me? Are you telling me to go? Are you telling me to stop? Are you telling me what to wear? Are you telling me not to wear? Are you telling me to be in this relationship? Are you telling me not to be in this relationship? You telling me not to cook today? You telling me to cook today? Should I wait to go to the store? Should I go tomorrow? What should I do? You know, the word of God says, acknowledge me in all thy ways and I shall direct thy path. And a lot of us need some direction on today. A lot of us need to stop, think, listen, and then do. Okay? <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be serious on today. Hey, that listening, that's part, hey, obedience is better than sacrifice. Am I right? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience can save your life. Being obedient can change your life. Okay? Not only your life, but other people that can be affected by what you say, what you do. Some people are watching what you do. It's not so much they talk to you, but some people are like, oh, he do that. I'm going to do that. Oh, she doing that. Okay, I'm going to do that. And God is telling you not to do something, to be obedient to the word of God, to be obedient to his spirit. Stop overriding my spirit, thinking that you know what I'm telling you to do. Come on, somebody. Because there are people out there that override the spirit of God, the true spirit of God, and then they end up caught up in some mess doing them. If you do you out of the will of God, you're going to get done. Okay, I'm trying to tell you, I know what I'm talking about. I know that I know what I'm talking about. This is just a quick word on today. I love you. May God be with you. If this, I uh, hope this edifies you some kind of way. I hope it touches you some kind of way. Um, I hope it goes out to Zach. I don't care if it's one person and it's something that they need to hear, something they need to know. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. What did we learn today? Obedience is better than sacrifice. And we can stop and we can listen and we can fast and we can pray. God is good. He's what worthy to be praised. I love you on today. Um, I guess I should say share and subscribe or push like, whatever it is you think that you need to do. May God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.